so excited to get back in the ring with you on Monday that can you believe I never introduced myself? Well, hopefully most of you already know me. I'm Lauren Gambino, your host, or better yet, your coach, ref, and teammate, all in one. And we have a good one for you tonight. This is HQ Sports, your live sports-only trivia game where you can win cash for being the fanatic that you are. I'll be asking you 12 questions. They're going to start off easy and get tougher as we go. If you can stay in the ring with me, dodge in those TKO rounds and get that final answer correct, of course, then you win. $1,000 is our pot tonight. Oh, yeah. Consider that a nice little signing bonus for you. How about that? Oh, yeah, we are freshly into Season 5. You know that, which means your points and levels have reset. You will still earn points for every question you answer correctly in trivia games, but now you can also earn them through the HQ Daily Challenge. It's live for all iOS players who updated their apps. The HQ Daily Challenge is a series of trivia questions that you may already know. You can access it anytime, multiple times per day to earn gold points and... Ooh, look at that. Coins. Yes, HQ coins. New and exciting. They can be used to purchase power-ups like extra lives, erasers, all of that for now. But maybe more to come in the future. You just have to wait and see. If you want even more HQ coins than what you can earn during the daily challenge, you can also pick some up by tapping on your screen right now, or you could buy them in the HQ shop. That's accessible through the app's home screen at any time or by swiping left in the chat. Left in the chat right now. It's like a mirror image. Anyway, hey, big news. We have our new theme on the books next week, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's uniform trivia with the expert Paul Lucas of Mini Watch. He's the go-to person for all things sports uniforms, so he wrote the game for us. How amazing. And he'll actually be appearing in studio. That's Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be fun and interesting. All right, team, you know we always get warmed up on Twitter before every game of HQ Sports. You can find us there at HQ Sports. This is a fun one today. Ohio State is looking to trademark the word the. You know, you have to say the, though, right? What word do you think your favorite team or athlete could trademark? Let's take a look at what your answers are. At Tommy Two Times, what's up, T3? Says David Ortiz should trademark Big Poppy. He's more known by that than his real name, hashtag Dirty Water. I agree with you. Look at that. Agreeing with a Boston fan. At Mike Wiz says, being a lifelong Vikings fan, I think they should officially refer to their fans as Skulgers. I like that. They probably did trademark Skull, but Skulgers should be next. At Dylan James 77 says, gotta be Gloria for the Stanley Cup champs. Uh-huh. At TFM says that we did not kick Britain out of the colonies just so they could name a clock after our quarterback, Big Ben. We had him first. Yes, he's a very old quarterback. <laughs> At Great Mats B2 says the Yankees should be the only team to use pinstripes. Everyone else has to call them skinny stripes. <laughs> hey, like your suit. That's interesting. Yeah, it's my new skinny stripe suit. <laughs> That one made me laugh too much. And at Hey Hey It's Matt says Lauren Gambino should trademark the great Gambino. We're working on that one. Oh, great answers. Thank you so much for playing along. I don't know if any of those will get trademarked, but I do know one thing. It's time for HQ Sports, and that for sure is trademarked. So let's get into it. So the over 96,000 players ready to get into the ring and show me what you're made of. Now's your time to shine. Round one starts right now. Which of these is a fairly common play in baseball? Punt, bunt, or thump? Oh yeah, nice and easy at round number one. If you are punting or thumping, it is most likely the wrong sport unless you're with Chumbawamba. Tub thumping, remember that? Unless you're looking to get thrown from the game, of course. It is less popular than it used to be, but if you, you know, just want to hit the ball a little bit, Try this cue montage. <laughs> Sound effects not included. That 
is a bunt. Bunt is your answer here at round number one. 72,646 of you getting that one right. Nice and easy at round number one. And before we do move on, you know I got to share a little insight with you. And it has to do with extra lives. You know that points and levels were reset on Monday, so you got to hook yourself up with a couple of lives to help you get back to those higher levels quicker, right? Less people on those high, high levels means more money in the pot at the finish, so you definitely want to help yourself win tonight. I see so many people playing our HQ Daily Challenge. What level are you on already? People are tweeting that they're on level three or four. That's insane. You have the power to level up as fast as you want to now with our daily challenge. But don't forget about extra lives. They help too. All right, round number two. Let's do it. What local athlete is now a part-time owner, part owner of the Seattle Sounders soccer team? Ross, Russell Wilson, Colin Kaepernick, or Aaron Rodgers? So many S's in a row. You can't fault me for that one. <laughs> oh, if you love football, it makes sense. You'd like the other football, too. Seahawks quarterback Russ Wilson and wife musician superstar Ciara are now part ownership group, part of the ownership group of the MLS Sounders. Russell Wilson is your answer there. Too many S's for me. 67,798 of you getting that one right. Sound or Sounders off in the chat right now if you like this move. I don't know. Seahawks fans, what do you think? Let me know in the chat. Round three, which of these teams has played in a Super Bowl? Detroit Lions, Cleveland Browns, or the Tennessee Titans? Nice and clear there. Yeah, can you believe there are teams that haven't played in a Super Bowl yet? Well, the first version of this team, the Oilers, never made the big game, but the Titans did, losing to the greatest show on turf, the Kurt Warner-led Rams in 2000 by one yard. Look. Oh, Kevin Dyson couldn't stretch it out far enough. Just like I can't stretch it out as much as I stretch, I can never touch you. The phone is always in the way. Tennessee Titans, they still played in the big game, though. 58,652 of you getting that one right. Ooh, of these teams, who do you think has a shot at it this year? I mean, I think the Browns are loaded on offense. Round number four. Who was the only player besides Wayne Gretzky to win the NHL's MVP award in the 80s? Mark Messier, Mario Lemieux, or Mike Bossy? The 80s were owned by Bossy's Islanders and Gretzky's Oilers, of course. And Gretzky took nine MVP awards. But, you know, he took a little one-year break and let someone else in for a change. Super Mario came in who won it in 87 and 88 that season. Mario Lemieux is your answer here. 43,371 of you knew that one. Le Magnifique. Yes, I mean, share the love, leave some room for someone else to do something great, right? He did, because he has the 10th most goals scored of all time. Round five. This video shows Tony Hawk inventing a trick called the kickflip what? What did that video show Tony Hawk inventing a trick called the kickflip what? Fakey, McTwist, or Ollie? I mean, it wasn't that old, even though that video looks like it's in black and white, right? A fakey is just riding the board backwards, so I guess not really a trick to most people. That would be a trick to me. This is one of the tricks Hawk is most proud of inventing, and it's called the kickflip McTwist. Mick Twist for the win here at Q5. 34,924 of you knew that one. Tony Hawk, he's 51 years old and still going. Broken bones, nope, nothing's holding him back. And that's how you should be in this game right now. Pure focus as we go on to round number six. Which Hall of Fame quarterback threw more interceptions than touchdowns? Brett Favre, Joe Namath, or Warren Moon? Man, it's crazy what one big game can do. It was Super Bowl three, 
Broadway Joe guaranteed his Jets would upset the then Baltimore Colts in the Super Bowl. They were favored by 18 points. Crazy. And he actually did it. His teams also had an overall losing record while he threw 47 more picks than touchdowns. But he made it to the hall in 85, and that's all that matters, right? Joe Namath is your answer here at round six, 25,316 of you getting this one right. And he just recently spoke out about this new Jets team, saying he likes the looks of them. Makes our producer Gab very happy. She's nodding in agreement as she throws it on to round number seven, which NBA team's current logo features a sword, Cleveland Cavaliers, Sacramento Kings, or the San Antonio Spurs. You got this as a hint. Just throwing that out there for you, nice and loud and clear for you to hear. Hopefully that helped you. Since 2004, the Cavs have had two different logos, but both prominently featured Wah, a sword. Oh, I didn't get that timing right. That was my bad, Gab. <laughs> Cleveland Cavaliers is your answer here at round, round number seven. Saw 25,200 of you on the dot. Wow. Getting that one right. And hey, perfect timing because it is time for our seventh round stretch. Stretch out those fingers because I got a question for you. Summer is coming to a close, I know, and it just makes me think of when I was a kid playing pickup games on the street. So my question for you is, what street in your youth do you miss the most? Mine is. Uh-huh, we're in agreement. 45% say wiffle ball. If you were like me and you were in the street and like your neighbor's car was first base and someone would have to like take a t-shirt off that was second base and like this tree was third base. Best times, man. Best times. Round eight. What golfer had the greatest number of PGA wins in their 30s? Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer, or Jack Nicholas? Woods dominated his 20s, but remember, four times in the oh, ooh, over 18,500 of you getting shot down here at round num number eight. It's okay. You can use multiple extra lives per game. I see 2,500 of you tapping on that heart to get back in the game right now. We got a few more left. Let's see what you got round nine. The man who lends his name to the Packers home field primarily played what position? Linebacker, running back, or quarterback? His name Earl Curly Lambeau. He was also a kicker, but he made his name as a star halfback for the Packers. He was the ultimate hometown hero who also starred for the Green Bay East High School. Truly coming full circle there. Running back is that position, though, at Q9, round 9, 4,875 of you getting this one right. Oh, yeah, moving into our final quarter. I mean, we're talking running backs. We're talking Packers, right? All I got to say is Aaron Jones, what's up? You going you gonna to go off this year? Let's hope. Round 10, Erica Wheeler is the only undrafted WNBA player to ever do what? Score 50 in one game, win All-Star MVP award, or lead the league in assists? Erica Wheeler played at Rutgers and then became the first woman to go from undrafted to All-Star MVP. EP, she gave an emotional, inspiring speech. Is your answer here at round 10? 1,708 of you getting this one right. Gab, is this 
This is se oh, she's giving me the she's giving me the smirk. This is a semi TKO here. Wow, a couple of you bouncing back in using those extra lives. We got two left. Let's see if you can stay in the ring for both round eleven. Who is the only player in MLB history to steal one hundred bases in his first season? Ricky Henderson, Willie Wilson, or Vince Coleman? Wow, that is a grand theft, if you ask me. Not only did he steal 100 of his first, 100 his first year, but he stole 100 in each of his first three years. It's Vince Coleman. Oh, yes. Call in the robbery, Vince Coleman. 880 of you getting this one right. Ooh, the numbers are dwindling down. We only have one question left. If you have the opportunity to get back in the game right now, that is what you want to do because you know that pot is going to be bigger tonight. We are down to the final round. Oh, with the drum roll here. You worked so hard from round one through 11. Now is the one that matters most. This is your time to shine. Can you do it? Let's find out. Round 12. Which of these players did not win the Naismith Award three times? Ralph Sampson, Bill Walton, or Lou Alcindor? This is when it matters most. Sampson and Walton both repeated, and no one else has even won it twice. Alcindor, a.k.a. we know him better as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, won the very first award, but that was his one and only. Lou Alcindor is the answer here at round number 12, and we have 502 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations. So what? 502 winners means a lot more sense in the pot to go around, and it looks like we are getting close to $2 home. That is a nice win for 18 minutes and 23 seconds of your time. Hector LC, $1.99 is coming your way. Slamming, $1.99 is coming your way. All on 98 199 is coming your way as well. Dusty Snipe. Ooh, the penny fell to the lucky side for you, my friend, because you are getting a full $2. Do you know they still make $2 bills? Yeah, Tooth Fairy gave them to me. Anyway, congratulations to all of our winners, 502 winners. That is insane. What a game. You are all HQ Sports MVPs. You floated like butterflies and you tapped your phone for 15 minutes like true millennials. Come on back and play HQ Sports again next week. Our schedule is Monday and Wednesday, every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Don't forget, we have our special uniform trivia game at 8 p.m. next Wednesday. That's going to be fun. Trivia is on deck right now. I'm heading out for a little vacation hanging up the coach's whistle for the weekend. I'm Lauren Gambino. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game.